call the meeting of District 721 to order. Uh, please note that all board members are present and will stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, could I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the first uh, item is interview school board candidate Matthew Goldati. Um, you want to come and sit up here, please? Okay, in addition to the questions you already answered, we have a few more. So we'll start. We'll start down with, with Danny and just, we'll just kind of. Good evening, Matthew. Hello. Uh, please tell us about yourself and your background and why you have applied for the vacancy on the school board. Sure. Um, so my name is uh, Matthew Goldetti. I've met, I believe, um, everyone here. So, um, but I am a resident of New Prague uh, since 2011. Um, have a family here. Um, Three children, uh, two are at Falcon Ridge, and one is at St. Wentz. She's a preschooler, she'll be kindergarten next year. But um, background on me is uh, transplant to New Prague, um, uh, financial background. So I started out in finance as a um, young person and then progressively went through the ranks as a uh, CPA, and I work primarily with tax. I'm a partner at a uh, nationwide firm right now. Uh, reasoning for the uh, application is just I've always been somebody who really um, wants to be part of the solutions and I'm just not somebody who wants to sit on the sidelines and watch things happen and so I just know being an active member of the community um, this is one another way for me to participate in the community and to be really to affect the change within the community um, there's just in my opinion there's not in a community like this where you're trying to attract people to move here and young families to be here and business to be here I think the biggest thing you've asked a lot of people why they come back here it's because of the school system that we have and so I think just making sure that we continue to um, keep that a focus is uh, primarily the reason why I want to be part of this and uh, to help the community in any way I can so thank you yes so my question actually has three parts. Oh, man. I know. <laughs> I'm like, gosh, I get the tough one here. I should have brought something. I should have written something. Okay. So what do you see as the district's strengths, weaknesses, and greatest challenges? Sure. I think I can lump those into two. Okay. So um, I, think, I think strengths, um, I, I mean, a lot of times when it comes to just the fiscal responsibility. I think a lot of times we're moving in the right direction. I mean, there's always things we can be tweaking, um, but I just think from an educational standpoint, we are looked at in the area as, as one of the districts out there that people really want to be. And so um, I think we're um, acting in a way that um, is people are envy of. Um, challenges are gonna be continued just making sure that we can, I mean, I read through the agenda for the for the today but just the the fiscal uh, the piece of the reserves and things down the road and making sure we have a sound sound financials but at the same time um, I think a challenge across a lot of the districts is just making sure the student body is you know safe well educated we're providing the programming that um, we need to continue to provide to our our students um, and just the ongoing challenges of making sure those things are, are in focus yeah. Uh, what would your priorities be if you were appointed to the school board? Um, to continue upon all the successes we've been having. I mean, I think, like I said um, in my prior answer, uh, there are a lot of things that are going right. I mean, so it's, sometimes it's easy to jump into one of these positions and say, oh, we're just going to keep on status quo, but also at the same time challenging some of the decisions as they're being made. So I think there's, though we're moving in the right direction, and there's always going to be things that maybe we can tweak to make sure that we're continuing to make a um, sound decision going forward. A challenge for districts is to increase student achievement with flat or declining resources. 
What criteria or method would you use to determine priorities for funding various programs? So I think, um, I think to answer your question, I think we have to continue to focus on the classroom. So I know that with funding remaining flat or even declining, I think we have to make sure the classroom um, remains for the most part untouched as much as we can, but it's gonna be all the ancillary items that maybe, I mean, with any budget, I think anything is on the table, but I think our focus should be the areas outside of the classroom to make sure we're maintaining student ratios, student to teacher ratios, and um, beyond that, um, but I, like I said, I think we have to look at all aspects of the budget in order to uh, truly, to be non-biased, we have to make sure we're looking at everything. Okay, thanks. Please discuss what you see as the school board's role and what you see as the superintendent's role in running the school district. Sure, um, I think it's the school board's uh, role is to basically to create policy and to be an advocate for our students. I mean, I think uh, by looking at our student body and creating the policy to make sure that all students are, can succeed is really what the role of, I think, the school board is and the superintendent. I, mean, I think it's, they go hand in hand. Thank you. Our school district encompasses several communities. What communication strategy do you believe would be helpful as we seek to serve the needs of all the communities? That's a good question. Um, not Facebook, probably. Um, <laughs> um, but I think uh, with all of our students being part of these different communities, it, it is a challenge. Because um, I think one, you know, obviously a lot of our schools, most of our schools are in New Prague. So I think a lot of times, if you're from Elk and New Market or from Lonsdale, you think that all the focus is on New Prague. Um, it is a challenge. I think it's a, uh, continuing to do, you know, newsletters um, and communicating through those means, and then making sure the teachers are um, also getting that communication out to all the the families. Um, but you know, that's a it's a challenge. And I think that it's something we're going to continue to work on as a as a board. Uh, the next question is a scenario question. Uh, a parent calls or emails you asking that you take care of a problem they are having at their school. What would you do? Um, I'd probably not initially respond. I'd probably have to reach out to somebody who probably knows that situation, so whether it be um, superintendent. Um, but at that point, I think it would be something where I would take a step back and make sure I reach out to administration on that. Um, and then use their guidance on how to how to respond forward. Thank you. Tell me about a time when you had to support a decision you disagreed with. How did you handle it, and what was the result? Um, I think this happens in my everyday life. There's lots of with any organization. There's a lot of change that's happening. So and, and sometimes. Um, to be specific, I mean, I could bore you with some of the counting processes that we've been doing, but there's always going to be innovation and technology changes coming through an organization. It's probably no different than school um, situation, but really that you're changing for something that's maybe going to be happening down the road. And so it's sometimes I don't necessarily agree with it for the short term, but I understand over the long term it's going to be something that um, it's going to be good for the organization. Um, so even though I might disagree with it in a meeting with other principals, when I get out to the rank and file, it's always a decision of me to always cheerlead that, that, that uh, decision and make sure that everybody can get on board with it because it's, it's going to be something for the long haul. How do you feel about people who are different than you? Give me an example of how you've reached out to someone <coughs> who is not like yourself. What actions did you take and what was the outcome? Okay, so um, to be a specific way, um, I, I mean, specifically um, in my industry, I can talk about um, the finance industry and accounting professions, but it's been a male-dominated um, profession, uh, at least when it comes to like ownership and those things. So just reaching out to whether that's people um, that are female or from a different um, ethnic background, and making sure that they feel like they're part of 
the team or the, the group. And a lot of times it's just, it's the small little things that happen throughout the day and making sure those people feel, make, every, make sure everybody feels involved um, and making sure that you're giving, setting them up for success. So it's really just being a mentor for not just the people that are like you or come from the same background as myself, but really reaching out to all um, people and making sure that we can be a, a coach and a leader for, for all people and all backgrounds. Tell me about a decision you made that impacted other people. How did you arrive at your decision and what was the result? Like any decision? Something that impacted others. Sure, so um, I, I guess I've been decision on a daily basis, I guess, but it, a lot of times what it comes down to um, in my everyday work is, is, is technology. We have so much different technology coming at us on a daily basis. And so we recently, as an office, I can give you a specific example, is came down to switching our software from um, one system to another and the impact it was gonna happen. And we was during tax reform and it was, it's, so many things were happening at the same time. And um, it had a, it was one of those things that we, everybody knew had to happen. We had to switch this new system to make all our lives be better. But at the same time, it was something that a lot of people pushed back on because it was happening during so much change at the same time. So um, overall, looking back, and this is a decision that was made to move this system. Um, looking back on it a year later, I think we're all happy because it's all behind us one year. And now that we can move full steam ahead and, and provide the services that our organization does. Do you consider yourself a leader? Why or why not? Um, I do, and I, and I don't look at myself as a, as a leader in a sense of, of managing others. It's more about being a mentor to other people. So it's the small um, conversations I have on a daily basis with, with staff and coworkers. Um, because I know that I was one day I was sitting in that chair wondering, oh, can I be able to, can I do the things you know, the other managers and principals are doing? And just being able to have the conversations to show them that, hey, you can do these things and having the relationships, I think that's what truly makes my everyday work exciting. And it's also what I think provides me as a, as a lead, makes me a leader just because they can see and I can provide the, that ongoing training. It's not just a, um, hey, I'm going to manage you on this particular task or this job. It's about everyday work and somebody who can help provide those, those challenges throughout the way. Well, you made it through the hard part. If Good. Did, I didn't realize there was going to be this many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to study. If you could kind of sum everything up and provide us with a, a statement of why you think you should be appointed to the school board. Sure. Um, I, th I think my educational background, my professional background, um, I think the fact that I have um, skin in the game with my children, I think that um, I'm a person of the community who really wants the best um, for the community and the people that are part of it. And um, I think overall, I'm excited to be able to take on an opportunity like this and to um, be a leader and to hopefully affect positive change and to <coughs> make sure that education across, whether you're student A or student Z, making sure that all students are, have the best case, um, a, best opportunity, um, I think I'm going to be a person who's going to advocate for that, and I'm excited to do so. Well, thank you very much. And does, it, does anyone else have any other questions or comments you'd like to make? No, thanks for replying. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, now we can go ahead with the resolution. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to consider the resolution filling a school board vacancy. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to consider the following resolution. Be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 721, State of Minnesota, as follows. Whereas a vacancy exists in the office of school board member with a term expiring on the first Monday in January 2021. And whereas Matthew Goldady uh, meets the qualifications established by Minnesota law to serve as a school board member, now, therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 721, State of Minnesota, as follows. Pursuant to Minnesota statutes, Matthew Goldady is hereby appointed to fill the vacancy in the office of school board member 
to serve for the remainder of the unexpired term, which will end on the first Monday in January of 2021, and until a successor is elected and qualifies. How do you vote on this resolution, Leo? Yes. Kim? Yes. Mark? Yes. Jean? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Denny? Yes. Item passes. Six nothing. Congratulations. Now what, is, now, what are the next steps for? Yes, yeah, so there's a 30-day waiting period. I know I don't have a microphone, but there's a... <clears throat> there's a 30-day waiting period before um, he can actually um, get on the board right. um, for public comment, concern, anything that might come up. Um, so March 23rd is the date that he would come to um, the first meeting, March 23rd. The, the first meeting in March is two days short of, right. of the 30 days. So we'll see you at the end of March. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to come to the meetings. And Your turn to bring snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Pat, it's your turn to bring snacks. <laughs> <laughs> snacks? Okay, uh, the next item is link crew. Uh, no, no, we adjourn. Oh, I'm meeting. So, oh, I'm sorry. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The meeting is adjourned.